after a month of vanishing without a trace, like the sun at night or your money before the end of the month because you had to pay bills, the history show is back, as if it were never actually gone. Was it even gone? Or did you just forget about it? Is there even in you to forget about it? Are you all even here? Or is this just really humanity? And what better subject to come back with than Max Payne that I had planned to make a show about since, since the beginning of the year. I, I made a whole list of things that I'm gonna make shows about. And then Noel Caldwell made an hour and a half show about the entire series, just like Petro Hoy did with Monkey Island. And starting to think it's not them, it may be me reading their minds, or my thoughts polluting theirs? Whatever the case, if you want to see an actual good show about Max Payne, go check out Noah Caldwell Gervais's video. It's called Sad Max, a Max Payne Trilogy Retrospective. It's over an hour long, but if you're here just for the vague memory of me playing Max Payne a while ago, not really recently because it gets stuck at one point while I'm chasing down Vinny Gagnetti, there's a door that's supposed to open but it doesn't, I install a bunch of fixes, it still won't run past the that point and I think it's because it takes the maximum FPS from the monitor and if it goes over 60 well it can't really trigger the event that's supposed to open the door so uh yeah, it turns out having a 75Hz monitor does have some drawbacks. Some. A few. But regardless. Max Payne. I remember the hubbub about the game before it came out. I remember seeing the screenshots, seeing the detailed analysis that every image of the game got, where people were circling in magazines the sideburns of Max Payne just to emphasize how detailed they look. Look, you can actually see hair. You can actually see something on this character's head that looks like a clear distinction between skin and hair. Not just some blobby texture. That's a different color. No, no, no. This, this, this looks like actual human hair. Mostly because it was, in the sense that Remedy uh, took a different approach at making this game than they did with, I don't know, Death Rally. They scanned actual human faces and put them into the game. And they took the same approach for a lot of textures in the game world. The models may have been as simplistic as that period of time would allow, but in terms of what was put on top of them, Max Payne looked amazing. It was the equivalent of the vanishing of Tim Carter of its time, or um, most of what you see done in the Fox engine, where they take actual things and just plump them in on top of models leading to a more realistic look especially nowadays because you can actually do proper lighting back then you couldn't really do lighting all that well and this really made Max Payne stand out since the get-go it stood out so much that the technology behind it became part of the Mad Onion 3D Mark benchmark from back way back in the day certainly 3D Mark is still around but it's no longer based on the Max Payne technology like it used to be. And then the game finally came out. And true to everything we had seen up until then, it looked amazing. Not only did characters look a lot more realistic until you saw how they picked up a gun, but the environment itself. You could tell that they took a lot of inspiration from the Matrix, from John Woo movies, also because they mentioned John Woo a couple of times in the game, and the way that they designed their levels, their entire framework for creating scenes, so they would imitate what they had seen in movies. You'd have wall tiles break apart when you shot them, not just leaving a texture there to look like a dent, but actually seeming to break apart. You had everything take place in the urban environment at night. It was in that groove where you almost expect to see Sam himself wearing sunglasses at night. It, is, it was cool back then to do that. Just ask JC Dent and he did it. It was cool. Most of all, this game brought us bullet time. The concept of slowing down the flow of the game, to better accentuate the action, the movement, the style, the rolling around and slamming out of the floor trying to dodge out of the way of bullets that you could see coming towards you. Max Payne's bullet time well, sort of is a staple now of video games, you see it quite often. It's usually some upgrade you get to be able to aim better with your weapons or an animatic sequence that starts which lets you dodge out of the way of the enemy a bit better. Back then you had 
control over it whenever you wanted to. You could either leave it as being a simple tool to let you dodge out of the way of the bullets a bit better and aim at the same time and shoot the enemies, or you could activate it anytime you wanted to and just roll around and run around in bullet time until the timer expired, but then you killed some people and went back up. I don't think bullet time is ever explained in the game. It tries to wave away the idea of you being able to take a lot of bullets by having Max constantly pop every pain pill he sees, to the point where in subsequent games he has a bit of a trouble with addiction. I mean, who wouldn't? With the amount of pills you take through the course of the game, you may have problems. I'm honestly surprised they haven't killed them. Also, there is the drugs. But to be fair, he doesn't take drugs willfully. They're injected into him. And he starts having all those weird dreams that I can't actually show you because I couldn't get that part of the game on account of the door that was stuck. So let's backtrack a bit. What exactly is Max Payne? Well, it's a third person shooter made by Remedy in the year 2001. I think it was supposed to be released in the year 2000, but it got delayed according to something I used to read in the uh, old magazines. And it stars the titular Max Payne, a man dead. whose face will be forever seared into your memory because that is the face of Sam Lake, who was the writer of the game. He also did some level designs and he played Max Payne in terms of physicality in the many, many, many graphic novel bits that were strewn around through the game. He didn't do the voice though, that belongs to Joe Astor from Viper, or James McCaffrey if you know him better that way. It's probably better that way because Sam Lake's accent doesn't really fit the in-your-face super duper noir style of the game. It is a noir detective tale, a police story of the lone detective out for blood, out for vengeance, betrayed, trying to take down the criminal underworld with his bare hands, but at the same time it's also a bit of a parallel to Ragnarok. And not just because there's a bar called Ragnarok in the game, but because it starts during a unexpected and really severe winter. It starts with the death of Baldur. There's Valkyrs around. There's a lot of analogies in there. That There's the Wooden guy who's Odin. Not sure exactly where the Russians fit into Ragnarok or the Italians for that matter. But trust me, there's a level of Ragnarok Norse mythology in there, which sort of elevates Max Payne's story from being a earnest the point of silliness. I mean, actually proper campy silliness noir detective story to something that may be a bit more complex with all those cheesy lines that were taken out of old pulp detective stories may actually have some meaning behind them and not just because at one point max realizes that he's in the game and i mean that he is in a game uh, he sees the interface and starts commenting on it it goes to even higher levels in the sequel over the course of the game you do sort of get the sense that max really isn't all there even before they started pumping him full of drugs mostly because well he does have a bit of a uh, reason to be not all there you start a game with his family being killed and then it continues with his friend being killed and him being blamed for that last murder so max does need to have some issues to work out usually with a gun quite often with a gun he likes guns he's quite adept at using them even though wielding them he's basically chow yun fat in all throughout the game he makes a reference to the actor at one point. So the game is, is very quite self-aware about what it is and what it tries to be. And what it was was fun. Yeah, sure, it was about as linear as games got back then. A succession of levels that were, they were better designed than those you'd find in Oni. I'll give them that. But just the simple things of being able to slow motion shoot people. Or seeing the rifle bullet from the sniper rifle you just fired move slowly and then fast and hit somebody in the face and see them fall over slowly. Or when you hit the last enemy of a group, seeing them fall back, wounded, in slow motion, with all those ragdoll physics attached to them, which were a novelty back then, it really made it stand out. Now, is it still good now? Well, it's okay. It's still fun to play, maybe not as great as it used to be, considering we got a lot of great uh, shooters in the intervening years. But the story, the characters, the mood it sets, the music it has, oh, those are absolutely worth it. And it is, at times, quite funny. Like the bit with the door, that never gets old. That absolutely never, you always run into this. Heck, I ran into this in Max Payne itself when the door got stuck. You run into locked doors, but hey, you've got rocket launchers and grenades to the point where you could probably blow up the entire wall. And hey, 
there's the wall blowing up and falling down around a locked door. I think this may have been a bit before Red Faction started doing this for realsies. And its world was enjoyable. New York during a blizzard had soap operas on the TV, had something that looked like Twin Peaks which would be expanded upon. Quite a lot in the sequel. You could press the buttons on a vending machine and stuff would come out that you could not actually use but it'd come out. And there was a, um, a thing if you threw grenades in a hole you'd find at the first level. Then later on you'd meet some rats that had uh, desert eagles that would shoot you. And in general it is still a game that I recommend you give a try to. Though keep in mind that if you're gonna get this off Steam it costs kinda 10 bucks and you're gonna need a bunch of fixes for it. Including the one that sets the frame rate to 60 or maybe you're gonna Gonna have to do it manually which i didn't i got lazy so you'll actually not encounter issues where doors get stuck i'm probably gonna do a show about the sequel one day as well but uh well uh, it's been sort of covered a lot in that other video i mentioned at the start so um you can check that out and i haven't really played max Payne 3 but i think it even has multiplayer which is something that none of the previous ones did i'm not sure how bullet time would have worked back then in multiplayer would it have slowed down the game for everybody it would have been a bit awkward because then nobody would have had an advantage it of the bullet time it's just not really all that impressive is it oh, that's I like making a jedi game and not having any lightsabers or force powers so half of jedi knight usually and i guess that would be it for max Payne. and in order to avoid me saying again that i had planned to do something for a game and then somebody else made a much better video about it I'm just gonna post this, that's every game I plan to cover until the end of the year. Or there is a slash it means that there is an alternative, meaning I'm undecided on which of them to cover. But up next you have Starfleet Command, Onimusha 3, Oddworld or maybe Die by the Sword, Defender of the Crown, CSM, X to the Threat. Not the first one, I never played the first one. Project Eden. I was hoping to have like, something more consistent about Rune Master, but uh, don't think I'm gonna go to Gamescom. We're probably gonna have castles there because it was supposed to be uh, a couple of months ago. Get invited. Well, that's you can probably guess that that is for Halloween. It's uninvited. Project Firestart, which is a game I kind of glossed over in the uh, the history of games that year show. Alone in the Dark, the first one. Clock Tower, which I I kind of could have been. I was almost sure I made a show about on this channel as well because I made one at every other channel. Then you have the um, the Doom likes, if you will, the the early '90s shooter craze with Heretic, Hex and Blood, Shadow Warrior, and Strife. And then the Christmas special with Interstate 76. I'm going to try and fit it somewhere in there with it being a Christmas game or something. Sacrifice. Well, it's, it's about gods, I guess. And Parasite Eve, which takes place during Christmas. So it's sort of like Die Hard. Elephant. So that's what I'm covering for the rest of the year. Unless something happens. But will it? Who knows? For in the eyes of time are real not all just pawns. Just waiting to be moved. So like your mouse is now doing, closing in on that X button, cause the show's over now. Goodbye.